Hello and really warm welcome to St James Online Worship on Sunday the 9th of August. We gather together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who has shown us the way to the Father God and we can rejoice in that knowledge that we can be called sons and daughters of our Father in heaven. So shall we pray as we commit this time to him? Father God, we thank you for giving us Jesus. May we grow deeper in our understanding, in our love and our identity in Jesus this morning. Jesus, we honour you, we rejoice in you, we love you. And we want to give glory to you alone as we gather this morning in your name. Amen. simply come Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself is not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing
Let's take a moment to confess those times when we have turned away from the Lord in the past week. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So may the God of love and power forgive us and, for and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Evening comes. Lay tasks to rest. Thoughts reflecting on the day. The gifts you give. The people you trust me with. What an honour it is. To work within your plan. You know my name. For the work you give me. Your strength sustains. Yet I am more to you than instrument. I am son, daughter, friend. In my inmost, knit to you. Inseparable. Invaluable. Loved. Celebrated. Heard. Pursued. Grace abounding found in you. My work could not win this gift from you. We have a little quiz. Can you identify the famous parent based on the picture of their child. So the first one is for younger children. Can you tell me who these famous parents are in this picture? It is of course Daddy and Mummy Pig and parents of young children will know that this is Peppa Pig. Next, can you identify the famous father here from his son? The son actually looks quite similar to his father. It is the Hollywood actor Tom Hanks. Next, can you tell me who the father is in this picture? His daughter is also well known and famous as a model and an actress. Her name is Lily Collins and her father is Phil Collins. Next, another famous daughter and her father. Can you tell me who they are? Well, the famous daughter uh, is a designer it is Stella McCartney and the father is Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Another one that will be familiar to many, I'm sure. Who is the father in this picture? It is, of course, Homer Simpson and his son Bart. And finally, can you tell me who these people are? Now, I've blanked out all three faces, but are you able to guess who they are? Well, well done if you manage to guess that it is, of course, Prince Charles, Prince Harry and Prince William. Now, Prince Charles has many titles. He is the heir apparent to the crown, his royal highness, the Prince of Wales, Duke of Cornwall, 
Knight of the Garter, Colonel in Chief of the Royal Regiment of Wales, Duke of Rossay, Knight of the Thistle, Rear Admiral, Great Master of the Order of Bath, Earl of Chester, Earl of Carrick, Baron of Renfrew, Lord of the Isles and Great Steward of Scotland. And if you or I were to meet him, we would address him as your Royal Highness. But to William and to Harry, he's simply Dad. When we become children of God, we also get to call God, the creator of the universe, Dad. Jesus, when he taught us to pray, said, pray our Father in heaven. And the word that we translate as Father in Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke, is Abba. And if we were to translate that to English, the nearest equivalent we would get would be the word Daddy. And this is the message. Whoever we are, however insignificant, however small we might feel, we can all make a difference in the world because we are sons and daughters of the King, a child of God. And our value, our worth, our significance, who we are, all flows from this identity as children of God. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free at last he has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Free 
to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Good morning. If I asked you, what is your job title? What would your answer be? This isn't necessarily paid employment. It could be something where you volunteer. It could be chief cook and bottle washer in your home. But it would be somewhere where you would spend a lot of the time on your front line in your everyday life. What is your job title? And think about the things that you might do within that job. My own job title um, and my own front line, I work for a, a company in paid employment, and it tends to vary depending on which project I'm working on at the time. And recently I was on a video conferencing call with another company and we were all describing our roles as part of introductions and the man from the other company said so you're the fixer and I was thinking not quite sure how to respond to that one but my colleague responded yes Julie fixes things for us I will add that it is all above board this fixing recently a member of our congregate congregation at St James asked me was it okay to work for their employer as a Christian? And what they meant was that the employer isn't a Christian organisation. And is it okay as a Christian to work for a non-Christian organisation? Well, the answer is, of course, yes, as long as they're a reputable and ethical employer. And in actual fact, 98% of us 98% work outside of paid church employment. So in terms of the population, very few people are working in paid church employment. So for the rest of us, Christians working outside of the church, then that is our front line. And that's a really large mission field. And wherever we are, whoever we are, we can make a difference however insignificant we might feel compared to other people and to the jobs they do because of one thing our identity first and foremost we are sons and daughters of the king and this is where our value comes from and this is where our worth comes from and everything else on our front lines and in our lives flows from this so this is liberating and is absolutely amazing. And when we say the Lord's Prayer, we might rattle through it because we've said it that many times. We know it's the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, but do we really think about what it means? Well, let's start. Our Father who art in heaven, so it's life-changing when we realise that we are sons and daughters of the King. 
and we worship a God who loves us. And that might be the one thing that gets us through the storms of life when we're hitting really difficult times. But we should also realise that we're part of a community of Christians all around the world, of all denominations, all worshipping our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. When we became Christians, we aligned ourselves to God's cause and the things he wants us to do as Christians. And he fully deserves the glory and the praise. And we need to revere him. And how wonderful it is to be part of his family business. And this is no ordinary family business. This is a global family business that encompasses everything. And that includes us and our everyday contexts. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Change is challenging and maybe at the moment we're feeling anxious in particular because of the uncertainty caused by COVID-19 and we're not quite sure of how things will happen in the future and when things change it takes us out of our comfort zone and we'd rather things stayed as they were. But as followers of Jesus, we are called to change the regime. God's will be done here and now. And as followers of Jesus, we should want the ways of the kingdom and that, that is at odds with the worldly ways. And when Jesus taught the disciples this prayer, the Roman Empire was the all-powerful empire. And the Jewish people, as people of God, didn't quite know how to respond. And some decided to respond with their own personal piety, being religious as possible. Others tried to accommodate the political issues of the day. And others went off to the desert and withdrew. But as followers of Jesus, we are part of this kingdom and we can pray for this kingdom in the here and now, in our everyday lives. Give us this day our daily bread. God looks after today's needs. We have a reliance on him and he wants us to rely on him and provide our needs. And this is all part of the relationship we have with him. And this is all part of the significance we are to God. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. This is about yesterday's mistakes. When Jesus taught this prayer to the disciples, he knew that there would be times when they would need this prayer to be forgiven and to forgive others. We are as good as we think we are and others aren't as good as we wish they would be. So this prayer helps us and we can pray to God to forgive us and to forgive others. And we need his help to do that. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Well, Jesus seems to think that we shouldn't be too confident in our own ability as disciples. We will be tempted. Temptations will come along. Maybe they already have and you've been forgiven for those or there'll be temptations in the future. But we need to know that when we pray this prayer, we're not alone and we're praying for protection and deliverance from the temptations from evil. So once we do all these things, let's look at our job title again. And let's change our job title to whatever we said at the start, to son or daughter of the king. So I'm not the fixer, I'm a daughter of the king. And we can have confidence in wherever we are on our front lines, in whatever we do, because of whose we are. Not who we are, but whose we are, because we belong to God. And this secures our identity so that on our front lines we can be confident that God works in us and through us. 
Amen. Christ be in my waking as the sun is rising in my day of working with me every hour. Christ be in my resting as the day is ending, coming and refreshing, watching through the night. Christ be in my gladness for the joy of living, thankful for the goodness of the Father's hand. Christ be in my sorrow in my day of darkness, knowing that I follow in the steps He draws. I've been speaking to Paul Crooks, who is a member of St. James Church, about how he serves God on his front line as a local businessman. Just for the benefit of those who don't know what you do, can, can you just say a little bit about your work? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, basically run a, um, well, the company's uh, Cash for IT Solutions. It's spelled C-A-C-H-E for the people who don't know that. So posh people would say cashier, but we tend to be uh, northern, typical northern cash for IT. Um, so we've been running um, seven years, um, coming up uh, this, this year, um, later on this year. So um, which I'm quite proud of, really, for the length of time running um, in what's certainly been difficult times and certainly where we're in now. Uh, we, we've... We mostly uh, look after businesses in terms of uh, their IT. Um, 
making sure everything's running fine, uh, keeping them going. Um, certainly done a lot of that in the last few months, helping people work from home, uh, which has been uh, different and exciting and uh, and many other things. Um, but that, that's that gone really well. Uh, we do repairs as well for computers. So that's... Uh, so that that keeps us busy um, as well, um, but yeah. Um, and, and and how how does being a Christian in business, and particularly owning your own business, how, how does that shape your what you do and and your life? Yeah, um, I mean certainly. Uh, I mean, I was probably I was a Christian just probably at the time I started the business, in fact, just probably a little bit after. Um, and as as my kind of journeys continued, and you know, I've learned and and um, listened as best as I possibly can. Um, I, I've and especially of late, uh, we, we've we've kind of I suppose the values of what the business stands for um, is, is you know is, is quite important um, for me. The values that we set is is trust, which I think for any business, they you know that's what they would see trust as being important. But obviously, as a Christian, that's, that's certainly you know um, you know uh, quite quite important. Um, it, it's kind of doing doing the right thing. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, and then doing the right thing is probably more important than actual results. You know, it's, obviously, business is there to make money, and we've got to do that. We've got to make a profit, but um, you know, it, but as long as as long as we're doing the right thing, really. Um, people, um, you know, certainly, certainly in, in important um, and you know internal. It, it's you know just looking after the people that are involved, and I, I see the people that we work with internally um, is again, uh, you know, that that that's really important that they they see, you know, um, what we do, and I do share. We're, we're quite open, um, and you know, the, the you know the, the the guys know that, which I think is important. Um, but obviously, it's it's been accountable for that as well, you know, that we're, pardon the pun, but practice what we preach, et cetera. Um, externally as well, you know, dealing with, you know, not, I don't see not so much dealing with, with clients or um, customers, uh, which again is also important, but even just dealing with our, um, I call them partners, some people call them suppliers, but it's building up close relationships and, and it's surprising what you do find out and, and, you know, just, just by being nice, I suppose. And, and again, doing, doing the right thing. Um, mannerism, um, you know, that, that's something that, that, that we, you know, we, we find quite important. It's how we, how we speak, um, you know, and, and the, the way we say it. Um, I don't know, I can't, you know, I've got to be honest, we're probably not doing that all the time, but it's some of that, you know, try and practice and, 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 you know, and, and do the right thing. Um, and for me, hope, um, that's, I think, and especially of late, that's, that's the word that keeps on jumping out at me. Um, as we've been through this um, strangest of times, um, I think one thing as a Christian as we know is, is having that hope, and I think that's what kind of keeps that light flicking her away. Um, you know, it, it's it's to me as I say, it's important as ever, and and I think as you and I were just talking a bit earlier, it's it's kind of having that patience. I think you know, there's a lot of unknown, and it's trying to plan ahead with not sure what you're kind of planning for really. So it is a day by day, which never been very good at patient and a lot of people that know me will, will kind of know that and it's something I've worked on and I would like to think improved but I might get told differently. <laughs> and in terms of how we can be praying for you specifically, for you, for your business, for your family, what things can we be praying for? Um, yeah, yeah, it's a good one that one. I'm never very good at um, um, asking. Um, I'm, I'm, I'd rather I'd rather be helping and, and giving really. But uh, um, I think at the moment the, there's a lot of there's a lot of decisions. Um, there's a lot of reflection that we've done with the business um, and, and 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 home as well because obviously business has a knock on effect with home and, and vice versa. So um, certainly wisdom um, is, is, is I think is a, is a, is a powerful one uh, with decisions and processes that we're kind of looking at um you know i'm certainly on my comfort zone in in some areas um a lot of areas i've had to grow quick um so you know that that would be that would be welcoming and, and strength i suppose it's it's been very tiring um you know a lot of long days 
And again, that has a knocking effect for Janet and Abigail as well. As we come to a time of prayer, let us remember um, how we were once separated from God by our sins and wrongdoings. But that, but that day over 2000 years ago, Jesus paid the price for every one of our sins that we have done and that we will do in the future. And that was done when he sacrificed his own life on that cross. It means now we can all have an open and personal relationship with our loving father. And one of the gifts that comes from this relationship with God is prayer. We can come to him with our worries and fears, but also with our joy. Sometimes though, we may struggle speaking to God. We may try, but our minds go blank or we get distracted. But one technique you guys might find helpful um, is the five finger prayer. And if you don't know it, then don't worry. Um, I'll be going through what it all means with you now. So firstly, we got the thumb. So when you hold your thumb out, you'll see that it's the closest finger to your body. So this is to symbolise those who are closest to us. So that could be your parents, your siblings, your husband or wife. Uh, it could be your friends. Um, but also the Bible says um, that our enemies can also be considered close to us. It tells us to bless those who are against you, who use you and who persecute you. So you got the pointy finger. Um, so this is an awesome reminder for us to pray for those who teach us, who guide us and who heal us. Then you have the third and tallest finger. And this is a reminder to each and every one of us to pray for those in authority and power. And then you've got the fourth finger. Some know it as the ring finger. And it's the weakest of all five of the fingers. It should remind us to pray for all those who are weak, troubled or in pain, whether this be physically or spiritually. And this is so important now more than ever, as each of us face um, life with a world with the coronavirus. And the fifth and final finger is the little finger. And it's a great symbolization to how we should place ourselves in relation to, relation to God and others. So now we know what each finger represents. Let's come together uh, in a time of prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of family. We thank you for the love and happiness that is within um, families. And Father, we lift up families um, today with, to you. We pray for them um, and all those families who are still remain separated due to the coronavirus, Lord. Who aren't able to see each other face to face. Who aren't able to hug each other um, and just catch up over a good old cup of tea and a biscuit, Lord. But Father, we thank you for the gift of technology that it has allowed for people to uh, and families and friends to keep in touch virtually when they can't physically. And Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, we just pray that even though uh, we have to keep to the rules of social distancing and other rules put in place for people's protection and safety Lord we pray um, that families continue to gradually and safely reunite together Lord Father we also pray for those who are leading us within our lives we pray for teachers um, who are teaching and guiding us uh, the world's students, the nation's students, Carlisle students, through the past few months. We thank you for their perseverance, their strength and courage that they've shown and that they've um, shown to their students. We thank you that despite all the circumstances, 
that they have stood up and faced every day. And we thank you that actually they've only been able to do this through your strength, Lord. Lord, we thank you for care workers, for NHS staff, for key workers, for everything that they have done these past few months. Everything that they've done to keep this country running. And as glimpses of normality come back uh, for everyone, Lord, and that the numbers continue to fall, or we pray that you be with them as maybe they start to deal with um, the things that they've seen through their work. Lord, we pray that you strengthen them um, and that remind them that it's okay maybe to feel maybe feel weak. We pray, Lord, for all those staff um, who may have gone off um, due to stress or sickness, Lord. Um, and we just pray that you comfort them, Lord, uh, now and help them heal. But also, Lord, we pray um, that you'll use them through their times of weaknesses. We pray that they come, if they don't know you, Lord, that they come to you. And for those who do know you, who you've placed within hospitals, within schools, um, within care homes, within supermarkets, Lord, that they are a light to those um, who do not yet know your love for them, Lord. And we thank you that you've placed them there to be... um, to be a flame um, and a spark to your um, your bonfire of love, Lord. And we thank you for that. Lord, we pray for all those in authority and power. We pray for our Queen and the Royal fam- Family. We pray for members of Parliament and all in authority that they continue to govern this country despite coronavirus and the challenges that that creates for them. We thank you um, for all the the work that the Prime Minister and the members of the Cabinet have done for this country, Lord, um, and the hours and, and, and the oh, so many hours that they've put in making sure that our safety and that health and well-being is put first Lord, we thank you for all the work that they've been doing. And we pray that through all the, the feelings and emotions that they are having to deal with while still doing their job, uh, we pray that you will be with them through all the decisions and circumstances that you guide their thoughts, their actions, and that through that it brings love um, to our nation, Lord. And we thank you that that can only be done through you. And Father, we pray for all those um, who are ill, whether that be mind, body or spirit. We pray that your arm be around each and every one of these people, that they feel your strength carrying them through. We pray for all the families um, and friends who have lost uh, loved ones due to the coronavirus and other illnesses. Lord, we pray that you comfort them through their darkest moments of grief, Lord. You know how they feel, Lord. You know that of the, the pain and agony it is of losing a loved one. But Lord, you are, you know that there is hope beyond the grave and we thank you for that. And Lord, we ask that you continue to remind them of that and that they continue um, or start to believe it within their soul and within their heart, Lord. So Father, we take a minute now to lift up these people to, to you who are on our hearts and in our prayers.
We pray that you will continue to be with them in the high and low moments, Lord. And we thank you that you will be with them when they're weary. And that we can have courage to know that you will give them rest. And finally, Father, we pray for ourselves. We pray that you will continue to support and guide us through all circumstances um, that we are having to face because of coronavirus. We thank you that you will continue to guide us um, and strengthen us when we may feel overwhelmed due to the changes um, and restrictions that has to be put in place because of the virus. We thank you that whatever might come across our path, we know that by turning to you, we are safe and that nothing, nothing can truly hurt us with you as our shield and our defender. We pray that through this coming week, you guide us in doing right. We pray that um, if we are feeling as though we are becoming distant from you, Lord, that you will be guiding us back into your ever-loving arms. We thank you that we can never be too far away from you, Lord. We can never reach a point where we are lost from you, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we praise you. Amen.
It's been really good to worship together today. Really glad you could join. So we pray as we go into our week and just commit this week to the Lord. I want to pray the words of Paul from um, Ephesians, this beautiful prayer from chapter 3. Paul prays, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So Lord, we ask that we will go knowing your love for us, and sharing that love with others who we meet this week. And we pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.